Come on, you guys. Make yourself a home. Grab whatever you want. Do whatever you want. Tear the place up. Make tons of noise. Louder the better. <laughs> oh, it's it's always something different every day. It's very exciting. Yeah, there's, there's, there's so much stuff. I don't know really where to begin. Can't get enough of this place, can you? I guess not. That's a way of drawing you back. So <laughs> House of Cards Inventory Sale. Hammer Shop of Steel's WCMF 96.9. House of Cards. House of Cards, help you? House of Cards, can I help you? House of Cards. House of Cards. House of Cards. I am used to funny. If you don't believe me, take a peek now. Um, there's only one house of guitars, the store that eats your brain. When do you think you guys became who, who you are now in terms of prestige and how well known you guys are? Oh, are we well known? <laughs> this is the greatest show on earth, the eighth wonder of the world. Right? This is the most fun place to come shop for guitars. It's just great. The mass chaos. Are you kidding me? <laughs> Take everything you own and throw it on the floor. <laughs> just ask an employee, they know where it is. I can't leave this place. It's like instant musician heaven. It's like a museum here. But you can buy stuff here, it's great. I've never seen so many old vintage guitars in one place in my life. This is where everybody should <laughs> Guitars is the My son's visiting from Boston, so we gotta go to the house. Oh, yeah. oh I love it. I love all the guitar songs. You, you love I have it? like 42 guitars, I love it. Oh, my god. I'll be Derek, I'm trying to buy everything right now. So. <laughs> this is me that hang out back in the My house of guitars, I'm in love with this place. Many thanks. And that was Josh. And then, that's incredible. And then this one here to the house of guitars, my new favorite place. And uh, my story is, is that when I was growing up in Ottawa, Ontario, uh, we used to get a Rochester station. You know, I'd watch cartoons on Saturday morning, and they had the freakiest commercials. The Great House of Guitars. It was just like, the, it's kind of like these guys were on acid or something. And I remember watching when I was a kid going, holy crap, that looks like a crazy place. I gotta go there. Here I am. Okay, I guess you've got a point. <laughs> um, yeah. I mean, you guys made a name for some of you. I agree. Cool. Yeah. Yes. We don't know any different. We knew we had to make it, you know. It was a must. And was it just perseverance and willpower and, I guess, yeah. enough sales that eventually got you stable? Yeah. 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 Just hanging in there, just pushing and pushing and pushing, yeah. offering deals, winning over customers. And, you know, it wasn't just a music store run by business guys. It was you know, a business, a music store run by musicians and with a passion and an enjoyment of the whole thing. So I guess it was just you guys doing what you love, and then you got a little luck in there too, huh? Yeah. That's what yeah. You, what you meant? Yeah, timing was important because the Beatles just started, and there was bands on every block, and, and rock and roll was budding, I guess, yeah, at that point. Yeah, yeah. I mean, they they say I'm a local legend, which is just people talking. I've just been lucky, and it's always been always the right place at the right time, thanks to Bruce. But you know, it was like, okay, where are we gonna go? And, and then I was. Write my number down for a friend of mine, Chuck Catello, who's a jazz player, uh, guitarist, and that. And everybody was like, Oh, he signed an autograph. It's like, Okay, like, well, it's like, keep on rocking, fast right. Like, oh, wow. It's like, you know, it's nobody, you know. It's, this is cool. No, it's an ever growing thing. Uh, and we get lost in our daily duties, and we kind of forget where we're at or how big things got, how things mushroomed. Um, we did so much. You know, between the store and the bands and just everything, just dedicating our whole life to everything. It's a little bit of everything. It just kind of, people knew us for one reason or another, um, either the store or the band, and it kind of all just incorporated together to the, to the fame and the popularity of the place. There you go, I get to take, my, uh, take a picture of my name, yeah, my own autograph <laughs> on, on the Great House of Guitar World. Fantastic.
You've never been here before, I think. No, I just freaked out. Yeah. This is a museum to me, man. This is like, yeah. My name is Joe Dasbach. How you doing? This is my signature right here that I put on the wall in 1988. Anybody that came here to shop or buy guitars or have fun and buy records, this is the Wall of Fame where not only musicians and artists had signed, but any people that wanted to sign the wall would go ahead and do so. I like it. Awesome. I uh, um, started the House of Guitars in my mother's basement in 1964, and um, we eventually moved out of the basement there and moved into a regular store in uh, on Clinton Avenue and Norton Street, and then we moved to Clinton across from St. Michael's Church. Then we uh, moved to Shalott and opened a, a coffee house which was open real late in, uh, in the House of Guitars next door to it. Then eventually we moved to Titus Avenue down the street here in a small shop and we rented above uh, Cooper Delicatessen over there up above their top floor. Then eventually we bought that front building up front there, it was the Farmer's Grange Hall. And um, at that point uh, we owned our own place so it worked out better, you know. Then we started adding uh, three different buildings on since we bought the front building. Have, have there been any, ever been any, I guess, dark times for the House of Guitars? Any times where you guys thought you might lose it or you might not be able to do it any longer? Yeah, in the early years, every day. <laughs> <laughs> the first five years, it was a daily thought. That you might not wake up and tomorrow and be able to go to work? Well, we knew we were going to come to work. Uh, we didn't have any place to go. but. Making it financially, you know, there was the first five years were extremely rough. I mean, beyond what anybody could bear. We uh, kind of knew at a young age that we uh, had to work for ourselves because we were kind of on our own at an early age, and uh, um, we were way into music. So we were, we decided to, to kind of set up a shop running guitars. We started off real small in the city, and uh, as we grew, we expanded our stores. This is our seventh location, this big one here that everybody recognizes. All our earlier ones were small shops and we moved around a lot, you know. As we made money we kind of the better neighborhoods and more merchandise and bigger lo bigger space. We were uh, on the corner of Clinton and Clifford during the race riots, sleeping in the store, and it, it got pretty wild out of control but they kind of skipped over us. I mean we weren't and danger. Uh, there were a lot of break-ins and window smashings and we seen the National Guard walking down the street with heavy-duty rifles trying to quell everything. Went on for days. But we got along with the community pretty well. Um, we did. <laughs> sale for seven hundred seventy nine dollars. That's not bad. So I might, yeah, I might uh, just pop this one in my back pocket. Actually, who? Oh, he can hear the band. Yeah, Lucy's always coming. Yeah, this was the halfway mark. They looked at both sides. They looked at trial. They used to hang out. Yeah, it says two arms and wailing. Yeah, he's got to shoot it. We had Keith Urban walk in one time. That was pretty cool. Just unannounced, he bought some guitar. Uh, it was like two grand, some old vintage thing. You know, Ronnie Dio? Yeah. He was a shop here, you know? Right. Yeah, yeah I've known Bruce Dickinson since 1981. <laughs> Bruce, Bruce has known him longer than I have. I'm, he came, he'd been walking in the front door one time, and Bruce goes, that's Bruce Dickinson from Iron Maiden. That's no way. He says, yeah. I said, well, Jesus, it is. And we've been friends on and all. You know, we don't see each other all the time, but we know who each other are. Then a cab going down uh, the main freeway in Chicago, and we had a, a head-on collision. <laughs> we were all in the back seat after drinking lots of beers, and after we hit, we were, most of us were in the front seat. Uh, Billboard magazine said it was the godfather of punk in an article, because their records in 64, six, in the 60s, you know, punk didn't really end until the 70s. Vincent Galo, he does uh, like independent films, and he's like a, uh, what is that, that company? Uh, He's a model, some model for some company, and he bought uh, this guitar for 30 grand, 
That was pretty cool. Just kind of walked in. <laughs> Didn't really schedule anything at all. He just knew we had the guitar. It was pretty insane. Hey, it was brilliant. Oh, mind Dick upstairs. Robinson? Oh, yeah. My, I heard stories about that guy when I lived in Florida. We learned. Apparently, he and Armand designed the first acoustic bass. Yeah. Which, yeah. that was awesome. I know. <laughs> Armand had designed an acoustic bass, and, and so I built probably the first acoustic bass that, that you probably hear of him today. It was actually designed here and made here. Yeah. My first acoustic bass is back in the Marachi days, Marachi bands. It's incredible. <laughs> back then, there wasn't any independent distributing, so we were brand new, you know, making stuff happen. Uh, we don't, you know, there wasn't even college radio yet, you know what I mean? In the, in the 60s, the, we used to have a, a radio show. And um, a lot of that stuff looked like Johnny Cash borrowed it off of our writings and put it into his. And um, we uh, were kind of upset at the beginning and then I think after a while we realized that, hey, Johnny Cash liked our merchandise enough <laughs> and Columbia Records liked us. So we're, we're, we're on the right track. So. Uh, at that point, Andy Warhol was interested in it as an off-Broadway play and we were trying to convince, convince Andy to do a movie because everybody in the band was um, working at the House of Guitars. They were very small and just a small shot down the street. Another sad side customer for a house of guitars. <laughs> 